In this lesson, we're going to continue to look at heat transfer. This time, we're going to look at convection. Now, convection is the process by which heat is transferred in a fluid. Okay, so let's make a note of that. Now, by fluid, we mean that the material can be either a liquid or a gas. In this particular lesson, we're going to look at how heat is transferred in gases, but exactly the same principles apply to how the heat is transferred by convection in a liquid. Okay, so let's just imagine that it's early in the morning and we've got this volume of air here marked out and uh, we can say that this volume of air is cold and it has a mass of, say, M. All right, let's make a note of that. It's got a volume V and a mass M. And so we can say that this block of air here has a density. And the density, as you remember, is equal to its mass divided by its volume. Now, this is very important in understanding the principle of convection and convection currents. OK, so what happens next is, well, you know, it's early in the morning and the sun rises. Here comes the sun rising up in the sky. So what's going to happen is the sun's going to start warming up the ground here and uh, the ground's going to start getting hotter, you know, say just around this region, you know, we've got some dark soil here, some dark earth, and this starts to heat up a lot. And this is going to heat up the air above it. OK, so our volume of air here is going to get warmer. Like that, it warms up. And uh, when that happens, the air is going to expand. Because we remember that when things warm up, their volume increases. So our block of cold air has warmed up, and as a result, it expands. All right? So its volume has now increased. But the question is, what happened to its density? This is an important thing. Well, if we remember that if the density is equal to mass divided by volume, well, the mass has stayed the same. We've still got the same amount of stuff in our block of air but the volume has increased and remembering that because density is equal to mass divided by the volume if the volume increases then the density will decrease so let's just summarize that we can say the air warmed as a result of that it expanded that means that its volume increased and as a consequence of that, because density is mass divided by volume, its density decreased. OK, so we've got this block of low density air here, surrounded perhaps by colder air, right, around and above it. And so we remember that because the density of this air is lower than the air surrounding it, then it will start to rise. Exactly the same reason as if you put a ping pong ball in a glass of water, the ping pong ball will rise upwards in the water because its density is less than the density of water. Exactly the same thing applies here because the density of warm air is lower than the density of cold air, the warm air starts to rise. Conversely, higher up in the atmosphere, we've got cold air which has a higher density than the warmer air below it. As a consequence, that cold air will sink in the same way again as an iron nail will sink in water because an iron nail has a higher density than the surrounding water. So cold air, higher density, warm air, lower density. Cold air sinks through the warmer air below it. Warm air rises through the colder air above it. Now, there are a number of birds that make use of this uh, mechanism, this convection mechanism. Uh, in this country, for example, you'll find birds of prey, for example, and larger wing birds can make use of these rising air currents called convection currents. And uh, you will notice them that they're wheeling around. They don't actually just rise up but they kind of wheel around on these uh, rising air currents in a similar kind of way to the way that water goes down a plug hole in your bath. You'll notice that it goes around, it spirals around as it goes down 
through the plug hole. Well, in fact, a similar principle happens here, that the air doesn't just rise straight up and go straight down, it spirals around. And you'll notice the birds rising on these spiraling air patterns. OK, so these are called convection currents. Again, it's quite common to be asked questions about how particular heaters work, radiators or convection heaters that you might have in your sitting room. And again, it's exactly the same principle involved. So you're going to have the radiators turned on. You imagine you've got a room, it's a cold morning, the radiator's turned on, the air at the moment is cold, but right above the radiator it warms up. OK, so we get warm air here. That warm air expands. It therefore has a lower density. Its volume increases, so it has a lower density than the colder air above it. Okay, so we've got cold air, higher density. And as a result of that, because the density of the air near to the radiator is lower, and it's lower than the density of the air above it, this will rise upwards. Again, in the same way as a hot air balloon rises upwards because its density is lower than the air surrounding it. And the colder air near the ceiling will start to fall downwards through the warmer air below it. OK, so the cold air falls, the hot air above the ceiling rises, and so gradually heat is transferred from the heat source, which might be a convection heater or a radiator, through to the entire living room.